Hi, and welcome to your eight exercises to help you deal with your chronic low back pain. Chronic means that you've had the back pain for a long time. If your back pain has just started or very recent, it's acute, and you would need to follow a protocol for acute low back pain. For optimal spinal function, we will require hip and leg flexibility, spinal segmental mobility, so each vertebra of the spine can move separately in different directions. We need abdominal and buttock muscle strength. If this is your first time to do this class, be patient, be kind to yourself. It can take a bit of time to work out what's going on, but with daily repetition, your body will have more competence, your body will get more meaning, and your body will find more range of movement in doing these exercises. To start the class, you're going to need a mat, something soft, maybe some towels or folded blankets, something that doesn't slide around. You're going to need some pillows and some cushions, maybe some pillows to go underneath your knees, and probably a belt to help your stretch. Wear soft, comfortable clothing, not too tight, not too loose. Okay, we're going to start exercise one, knee curls. Come down to your mat, nice and slowly. Find your own way of getting there. And then we're going to just have a little time to set this up. So I'm using a cushion because I want to make sure my head is roughly to the forehead and chin's level. You don't want the head tilting back. You don't want the chin diving in. What a nice long neck. You want the ribs nice and softening down. Feet and knees about hands apart. So for our knee curls, they go stretch out the back of the hips. They also give you a stretch in the back as well. So as you breathe out, just bring one knee to you, give it a little bit of a pull, and place it down. Always be comfortable. Swapping out breath, finding that stretch. Come back in, breathing out. Now, as you do this, if your lower back goes to the mat, that's okay. It might give you a little bit more stretch in your back. Breathing out. Back down, so I think this is number four on this side. Breathing out to lift. Getting a good stretch. Last time on this side, breathing out. Breathing in to put the foot down, last time. And we can stay in this position, so we can stay in this position for our second exercise, which is our spinal rotation. So spinal rotation is gonna help our spinal mobility. The rotation will also help stretch out the back, and the rotation will also help us just find some rotational exercise for these abdominal muscles. Abdominal muscles work in different ways, and this is going to help some of the rotational strength. This exercise, though, we have a few variations. The reason we've got variations for this exercise is we want you to be comfortable. So your first um, choice is how wide your feet are. I'm going to start with the feet about hands width apart. Do this with me, and then just gently as you breathe out, roll your hips one way. Breathe in, back to centre. Breathe out, rotate your spine, feel the knees go off. Rotate back to centre as you breathe in. Now, if that felt a little bit weird in the hips, a little bit tight on the side of the hips, maybe try your feet out wide. This is a great position because it gives us internal and external rotation in our hip sockets. So breathing out, I rotate. Breathing in, back to centre. Breathing out, back to centre. Last position is to have your feet and knees next to each other. Let's just test this together. And again, breathing out, coming back to centre, and breathing out, come back to centre. The other thing that we can vary in this spinal rotation exercise is our breath. There's a good reason to vary the breath. When we breathe out and move, we get more range of movement. But when we breathe in to do the rotation, it stabilizes us a little bit better. 
So each person is going to be different. And again, we want to just test out what's right for you. I've been doing these with the out breath. So now we're going to do it slightly different. So just breathe in to prepare. Breathe out to do nothing. And on the next in breath, find your rotation. Feel your back pocket roll up over you. Come back to set as you breathe out. Ready to roll. Roll that back pocket up and over as you breathe in and come back to centre. The other thing to watch out for in this exercise is don't let your shoulders get pulled all over the place. That's going to be a big range. I'm going to do this with the in-breath. We're going to do five to each side. So I'm going to count to ten. So take a breath in to prepare. Breathe out. And then go how you want to. So I'm going to breathe in now. That's two. Three. Four. I'm keeping my shoulders quiet. Five. Just keeping my eyes looking at the ceiling. Six. Thinking about how we rotate the spine, being relaxed. Seven. Eight. Nine. And ten. Great, I hope you enjoyed that. Our next exercise is on our hands and knees, so just roll over to one side. Use your hands to help press you up. And then we're going to come over onto our hands and knees. We're going to do the cat stretches, or sometimes it's referred to as hump and hollow. So coming over onto your knees. Now you may find that your knees are just uncomfortable, so it's okay to put a cushion underneath them. Have your knees underneath your hips. Have your hands underneath your shoulders. Now, again, this can be a little bit uncomfortable on your wrist. Often a good modification is to make a fist and then come into what we call a military position. So just let's mark the first exercise. So we just can take a breath in to prepare. And as you breathe out, curl the two ends of your spine to the mat. So this is our round back. I'm taking top of my head and tailbone to the floor. Then as I breathe in, I'm coming into extension, top of head, tailbone towards the ceiling, and then back through. Just pause a second. So your range of movement might be small, it's okay. So let's, we're going to do five of these. Let's all do the same breath. We're going to take a breath in to prepare. And as you breathe out, round your back. Look at your knees. As you breathe in, take your tailbone, top of head to the ceiling. Find your range of movement as we come into extension. Breathing out nice and slowly into our flexion pattern. Breathing into our extension pattern. Coming into number four. Into your extension pattern again. Last time, curling the two ends of your spine towards each other. So they come around each other. And then in breath, taking the two ends of your spine to the ceiling. And then just gently come back to centre. So there were our cat curls. We want to do five of those. Again, they're going to give us flexibility off the hips, but also throughout the entire spine. Find what's right for you. Our next exercise, this is where we might need the belt, are our hamstring stretches. So exercise for hamstring stretches. Again, I want to be down on the mat. And for this exercise, I'm going to start with one leg straight. This leg straight helps me maintain a neutral pelvis. Keep your knee and uh, toes facing up to the ceiling. So what we're going to do is, as you breathe out, bring the leg up. Hold the back of the leg. Get this leg about 90 degrees and then just stretch out the knee, open the knee as far as feel comfortable for you. Doesn't have to get straight, 
What's more important is this legs at 90 degrees. I'm just going to show you on the other side. So to swap, always place your foot down, slide the leg out, and then slide the other leg in. So here I'm going to show you with the belt. Okay, so belt to the back of the leg. As I breathe out, I can bring it up. Again, I want to get that thigh to 90 degrees. Pelvis stays in neutral. And then I'm just going to stretch that leg out, open the knee to where I feel comfortable, keep the foot relaxed, and we can do the exercise. Now, we do a lot of these, and we're going to hold each one for 30 seconds. That's roughly about five breath cycles. So we're going to be quite quiet in this exercise because there's a lot to do. It's a nice exercise. So one leg out straight. You choose whichever one. Think about how that gives you that nice neutral spine, neutral pelvis. As you breathe out, just bring the leg up, find the back of the leg, try and get that angle, and then just straighten out the knee to where you're comfortable. We're going to take five breath cycles now, breathing in through the nose. And for this exercise, breathe out through the nose. So that's our first leg done, first time. Foot down, slide out, keep the knee facing the ceiling. Make sure we're still in our neutral pelvis, slide the foot along, gently lift up, find the back of the leg. Get that nice angle so we've got the stretch here, and then lengthen, straighten that knee, keep your foot relaxed, five breath cycles. Foot back down, slide it out, slide the other leg in, picking up on the out breath, hold the back of the leg, find that knee angle that feels right to you, and breathe. Place the foot down, slowly slide out, bring the other leg in, second time on this leg. Find your control, and then straighten the knee to where it feels comfortable, and breathe. Place the foot down, slide it out, come back in, lift, straighten, five breath cycles. Breathing for five. Again, sliding this leg in, lifting up, fourth round.
Okay, placing the foot down, sliding out, staying nice and long through the body. Lie that leg back in nice and quietly, float up, five breath cycles. slide out. So this is our fifth one on our first leg we started with. Maybe as you lengthen the leg out, maybe you can lengthen it out a little bit more, maybe you find a little bit more ease and breathe softly. That's our last breath, place it down, slide it out, maintain neutral pelvis nice and long, slide the leg in, float the knee, hold the back of the leg, and lengthen out the knee to where it feels comfortable, maybe get a little bit more range on this one, and five breath cycles. Place the foot down. So those were our hamstring stretches, helping us get stretching the hips and the leg and stretching the glutes. Now our next exercise, exercise five, are our abdominal control exercises. We're going to use an exercise often referred to as femur arcs. And this exercise is very important to find your neutral pelvis. I'm going to show you two different ways of getting there. First one is just tilt the hips backwards and forwards. Again, you might not have much range and you may not like doing this, so it just doesn't feel right. We can miss this out because I've got a second way of doing it in a minute. But if you're tilting your pelvis into posterior tilt and then tilting your pelvis forward into anterior tilt, you get a bit of an arch. And as you come back, the arch flattens. Come halfway between the two, hip bones and pubic bone level. Now, everybody's going to have a little space underneath your back. But every space is different because we're all different shapes. The other way of getting this, and this might be a better way for some people, is just to slide one leg out and then slide that other leg out. Find as much length through the body. Lengthen the back of the neck. Wriggle some length through your spine. Breathe out a few times with the hands of the chest and let those ribs soften. Again, maybe your hip bones and pubic bones are in the same plane. Now, just notice the shape of the back of the neck, the shape underneath your lower back, the placement of the ribs, and maintain all that now as we slide one leg slowly along the floor. Knee bent, foot flat, maintaining all our positioning, and bring that second leg in. So, neutral pelvis, little space underneath the lower back. That's very important because we want to learn to have the abdominal control in our neutral pelvis. So go to the femur arcs. Come and join me. We're going to take a breath in to prepare. And as you breathe out, soften the chest, pick the heel up, bring the knee up. In breath, place the foot down. As you breathe out, pick the heel up, lower the knee, place it back down. Okay. Pause. Like the previous exercises, the breath can make a great difference to whether you feel competent in this exercise or not. So I've suggested an out breath to lift the leg, which is often preferred because it allows us to find our lower abdominal connection. Other people prefer to lift with the in breath because again that gives them stability. So let's just check out how it feels to do that simple femur arc, floating the foot from the floor with a breath in. Breathe in to prepare with me. And then as you breathe out, just soften the chest, control the abdominals. Breathe in and breathe out. Maybe pick the heel, 
breathing in and breathing out. Now you want to find ease at this exercise. You don't want the belly pushing up to the ceiling or you don't want the pelvis losing its position. We don't want to be gripping and we certainly don't want the head to be forced into the mat. So we're going to do the exercise. We're going to do five alternating legs to each side. I'm going to work with the in-breath. If you prefer working on the out-breath, that's okay. So I'm not going to cue the breath, but I will just cue the movement. So find your organisation, pick the heel and lift and floating. Find your own breath. This is number three on this side. You want a light movement. You might want to even just place your fingertips onto your lower belly, knee, or waistband, and just check there isn't too much pressure going on underneath them. And it should be equal. Last time for my first leg. Nice and stable in the pelvis. Nice and stable on my last leg. Now, that is our first set. For these abdominal control exercises, we want to do three repetitions. Have a rest for 60 seconds, which is again about five, four to five or six breath cycles. I'm gonna do belly breathing. So you place the hands here, breathe in, let the belly expand, and as you breathe out, soften down. In my belly breath, my bones, the pelvis, the spine are staying still. It's just the softness of my abdominals. We'll go try a different version for our second set. So that was doing the femur arts coming up off the floor. We're going to do femur arts dipping down from what we call tabletop. Again, I'm going to cue on the out breath. Take a breath to prepare. As you breathe out, organize the body. Bring one leg up. Hold it here. Breathe in to prepare. As you breathe out, stabilize. Bring the second leg up. This is what we call tabletop. It's like your heels are resting on a coffee table. Breathe in, the toe dips. Breathe out. Come with me. Last time. Last time, the other leg. Place one foot down, place the other foot down. Again, back into belly breathing. Belly breathing is great because it helps to loosen up, organises the different layers of our abdominals. Calms the mind, softens the body, and the body more soft, we're likely to move better in our movement patterns. So we've got one more set to do. We could choose to go from tabletop, tipping down. I'm going to choose to do mine from the floor, and I'm going to choose to do mine with the in-breath again. So find your organisation. Now again, you don't want to be using too much force. It's got to be done soft and very gentle. So take your first breath into a pair. Organise with the next out breath. And here I go, breathing into float, and out breath, down. Choose a different breath if you wish to. Number three of my first leg.
and when you've lost count. So let's just do one more, if it's six, that's okay. So that's our three sets of our low abdominal control exercises using femur arcs, either going from tabletop and dipping the toe down or lifting from the foot up. Now in this set of exercises, when you do them yourself next time, see if you can build up your repetitions. So rather than just do five, we may have done six, start building up so you can get up to 10. So ideally you're doing 10 repetitions each side for three sets. Now we finished this set of low abdominal control exercises. Rolling over, we're going to come up to standing. So find your own safe way up. Again, you are someone who knows that you need a chair. Hopefully we had that to hand. I'm going to bring my hands back to my knees and going to place my feet on the floor, hands on my thighs, and come up. So our next Three exercises are done standing. Just tucking my shirt in so hopefully you can see things a little bit easier. So our sixth exercise is just five standing side bends. This is a great movement just to get some stretch through the side of your body, but also getting some movement through the spine. So hands down by the side. My feet are about just underneath my hips. So take a breath in to prepare, and as we breathe out, I'm just going to slide my hand down towards my knees. In breath, come back to centre, and out breath to the other side. Just stop for a second, I want to explain a little bit. So when you go to your side, really open up the lengthening side, so really let this side open. So again, as we go over to the side, let this side of the body open, open, and open up. So to do that, you might prefer the version of the arms, which is obviously, you saw me going a little bit earlier. There's the arm, comes down, and there's the arm. So we're going to do five to each side. I'm going to do the arm lifting up. You may not feel it's good to lift your arm up, so you want to keep your arms to your side, that's okay. But we definitely use out breath to go to the side, and we use our in breath to come back up. So, take a breath in with me, out breath, just have that tummy nicely organised, in breath, bring the arm up if you wish, and then out breath, side bend, in breath coming up, spot the arms, out breath. Breathing in. This is number five coming up. Okay, so side things. Just nice and simple, get some moving patterns. Again, using the out breath and the in-breath to return. Our next sequence is our standing roll-down. Now, stand about 10 inches away from the wall. I'll show you that in a different view in a minute. And when you've got the wall, so it's about 10 inches away from you, it's almost like your hips are going to try and touch the wall. But I'm going to turn sideways so you can see. So I want to be just nice and tall. I'm just going to demonstrate the first exercise. Just watch for a second. So as I breathe out, chin tucks in, just soften the knees. Hips are sitting back a little bit like I'm trying to touch the wall behind me. I roll myself down and I inhale, I inflate to come back up. Let's do this one together. Think about moving segment by segment. So we want to go down through the joints of the spine. You can think the head, the neck, the upper back, the mid back, the low back, the pelvis. Let's just this mark this one together so we breathe into the pair. Out breath, chin, 
head, neck, upper back, mid back, low back. Soften those knees, sit back a little bit, and then let that pelvis turn around. In breath, reverse it, turn the pelvis, stack up from low back, mid back, upper back, neck, and the head. If you feel yourself a little bit dizzy because you don't like your head going down, miss this sequence out. Okay, let's all prepare together. Let's take a breath in. We're going to do five. And breathing in, out breath, rolling down, head, neck, upper back. Pull the tummy in. Start to sit the hips back a little bit towards the wall behind you. Go down to where you're comfortable and breathe in, turn the hips, roll up through the spine. Feel the feet in the floor nice and tall. Breathing out, relaxing, deflating into this movement pattern. Breathing in, inflating to bring us back up tall. Find the range, range of movement that feels good for you. Last one. Going down segmentally through the spine. Tummy pulls in to protect. Hips turn over the top of the thigh bone. Knees are soft. And bent and then we're rolling back up. Nice and tall. Our last exercise is a squat, but our squat's going to be quite shallow. It's not going to go down to the floor so deep because it's important to, for us to maintain our lumbar pelvic control. It's going to help us engage a little bit from the abdominals, but it's mainly going to be working those glutes. We want to be in a neutral pelvis and neutral spine, standing up, tucking my shirt in so you can see my belt buckle. Now, you want your pelvis to be neutral standing. If you had a belt like me, your belt should be shining forward. So you don't want to be tilting it down. Sometimes we call that Donald Duck. And we don't want to be tilting it up to the ceiling because we don't want to be the Pink Panther. So we want roughly between the two movement patterns. Again, your ability to find that is going to vary from day to day. Second thing is we want a nice tall spine. So you want to keep your spine length. You want to keep thinking of reaching up through the crown you want to think, keep dropping down through your tailbone to find that length. Secondly, feet positioning is important. I'm as wide as my shoulders, so a little bit wider than where I would be for my hips. I'm as wide as the shoulders. Knees are soft. Feel your weight through the entire surface of your foot. So big toes, little toes should be connected. Center of the heel should be connected. Nice and tall through the body. I'm just going to mark the first one. You can just watch. So the first thing is just chin tucks in a little bit. Thumbs are in those hip creases. Sorry, I forgot to tell you how to find the thumb position. So what you want to do is just lift your leg up. Find that crease, put your thumb there. Lift the leg, put your thumb there. That's important because it's the thumbs pressing backwards that start the movement. So from here, I'm thinking neutral pelvis, nice long spine, floating up. Organize feet. As I breathe in, tuck the chin, sit back. So my hip creases are moving back. As I breathe out, I come up nice and tall. I'm going to mark that one more time, just watch. So I'm sitting back. My hips are traveling back. I'm maintaining neutral pelvis, neutral spine, tummies softly engaged. And I breathe back up to tall. So we're going to do Four of these is where you start. Again, you want to build up to maybe 12. So I'm going to do six today. You choose how many you want to do. And when you practice this at home, again, you might do less. You might start at four. Eventually, let's see if we can get up to 12. So standing tall, take a breath in with me. As you breathe out, organize your tummy, find your length, feel your feet. Thumbs, here we go. Breathing in and breathing out. Chin. Feel those glutes finish. 
connect the feet to the floor to press your head to the ceiling to get those glutes on. So I think this is number four. Rest here if you wish, we'll do another two with me. And that's our sixth rep. And we're finishing our squats. So, eight exercises. Knee curls, spinal rotations, cats, hamstring stretches, low abdominal control, side bends, forward flexion, roll down, roll back up again, and our squats. They will help you find your control for your lumbar pelvis and restore good spinal function to your torso. Thanks for watching.